hello to all Somervillians who may be listening and an especially warm greeting to all you undergraduates at present in lockdown in college. We're all sharing pretty bizarre lives right now and in future I guess you'll have some surprising and unexpected stories about it all to tell others later, perhaps even astonish your grandchildren. I've already amused my grandchildren by telling them how I got a matey letter from someone called Matt, whom I deduced was the Minister of Health. His main purpose was to tell me that I was someone at risk. At the age of 93, I didn't exactly need a Somerville education to work that out for myself. Of course, jovial Matt wouldn't have known that I'd been through five war years of daily uncertainty and risk, followed by several more years of food and clothes rationing. Incidentally, the rationing was such that in all my three years in Somerville, I only bought myself one dress. We wore dresses in those days. Anyway, I want to congratulate all of you on having come to Somerville, which, as you've realised, is a pretty special place. Collegiate life has always had its advantages, but the character of Somerville, I think, gives it the best of those advantages. One's fellow students are exceptionally diverse. My small cohort of students back in 1945 included people from Denmark, France, Poland, Guyana and New Zealand, while one was the daughter of a Nottinghamshire coal miner and another came from a background such that, to my amazement, she'd never learnt to make her own bed. Also, they were studying a diverse range of subjects from ancient Greek to modern medicine, politics to mathematics and literature. Incidentally, my math friend had worked during the war as a computer. In those days, a computer was a human being. And my literature friend later became a distinguished novelist. In what other environment can one go forward in life with such a range of friendships and a varied knowledge and access to knowledge. We Somervillians have other reasons to appreciate the college. We inherit a history of many extraordinary alumni, prime ministers and other politicians, publishers and writers, gardening experts, ambassadors. I think the very first uh, British ambassador woman ambassador was a Somervillian, and of brilliant dons, such as the Nobel Prize winner, Dorothy Hodgkin, whose mind was so caught up in chemical crystallography that she once lost all the front door keys, so her family had to get into the house through the fire escape. And we know there are Somervillians now at the forefront of the teams working to produce a vaccine against COVID. I recall particularly the principal who arrived in the same year that I did, the amazing Dame Janet Vaughan, haematologist, radiobiologist, who was a famously inventive scientist and an excellent college leader. She won my heart that first year by saying loudly at high table when confronted with a plate of unappetizing looking mince, mud. This was especially striking from one who I later discovered was a specialist in the effects of starvation and had been in the scientific team which had been sent to the notorious Belson concentration camp and had developed a suitable nutrition for the starving. She believed very strongly that science and other knowledge should be used to benefit human beings. In later life, 
she did more work in radiobiology and told me that it made more sense for her to risk her life on these experiments as she was old rather than endanger the younger scientists. I last visited her when she was 94, when she insisted on giving me breakfast in bed. Such people stood for the values and ethos of Somerville. That ethos also includes resilience, the readiness and capacity to make the best of one's circumstances. Such an approach to life makes it easier to face up to annoying situations such as the wretched Covid has put us all through. I have a personal mantra which has helped to keep me resilient in many difficult times and I'll pass it on to you. I'm a historian but an undergraduate friend who was reading English introduced me to the writings of William Morris. One of his novels, which I found in Somerville Library, ends with these words. Ill would change be at Wiles, were it not for the change beyond the change. So when the world seems to have changed for the worse, remember it will change again and be transformed beyond expectation. Goodbye. And with good wishes to all, and remember and have faith that there will always be a change beyond the change.